Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows strong, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. There's a lot to learn about overcoming. There's a lot to learn about the faith walk and the faith life. Uh, it's how God himself functions. He's a faith God. He, he is, uh, all his creation he has accomplished by his faith. And he's called us to learn and imitate him and be followers of him. We're in the early stages of our development, but he's got big plans for us and is going to take his kind of faith to do what he's calling us to do here on the earth and beyond. So you will not waste any time learning about faith, feeding your faith, developing your faith, because it'll enable you to live victoriously here in this life, and then you'll take it with you when you go, and it'll keep developing past this life. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come into the classroom. Let's release faith for exactly what he has for us today. Father, we ask for it. All of us agree together as touching this, asking you for anointing, grace, strength, illumination of truth and light and help. Thank you for ministering to us spirit and soul and body in every part of our life. We receive it by faith. We lay hold of it by faith. And thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look, please, in, in John, the fifth chapter again. We're into our 15th individual case of healing in the ministry of Jesus. The healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda. Let's read it again in verse 1. John 5, 1 says, After this there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep, actually the margin says sheep gate, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Uh, other translations say five covered uh, colonnades, alcoves. And it says in these lay a great multitude. Now that means it's not a dozen people. It's at least scores the word, this word indicates more than that. So uh, I would say hundreds uh, if you put everybody together all around this pool of uh, people who were weak and feeble is another translation of the word impotent. Blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Now, certain season means it was, somebody knew who it was, <laughs> but the people didn't know. The angel knew he was assigned to do it. So he was on a heavenly schedule, but the people didn't know what the schedule was. And so, uh, He'd go down and trouble the water, make a stirring in the water, a splash in the water, stir it up. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. As we said a couple of classes ago, the Lord would not do things like this unless healing was important to him. Right? I mean, if he didn't care, if it was no big deal to him, you wouldn't see all these things 
geared towards people getting healed. And these people, like we said, they had a covenant of healing with God that they had forgotten about, that they had gotten away. Somebody said, how do you know they'd gotten away from it? I read what the Pharisees say <laughs> and what the Sadducees, the religious leaders. They, they are totally out of step and sync with Jesus. They're criticizing and condemning everything he's doing. So they don't know God. You, you realize you can be religious and not know God. Yes. You can go to church every other day and not know God. Yes. You can have three seminary degrees and not know God at all. Yes. Not even be saved. Yes. Y'all with me, class? Yes. This is important. Jesus said, you must be born again. He said that to Nicodemus, who was a, a, an elder and a leader of the Jews, who was a, a scholar. So if knowledge would save you, Nicodemus would already be there. But he wasn't saved. Jesus said, you must be born again. Everybody said out loud, you must, you must be born again. Not optional. Not optional. If you're going to be saved, you have to be born again. And that's not the result of you joining a church or of you adopting a tenet of beliefs on paper, or even being sprinkled or baptized in water. That alone does not save you. That's supposed to be that you have been born again, then as a public show of your faith, you're baptized in water. And no, being sprinkled as an infant does not save you. You must be born again. Come on, are y'all with me? Somebody says, well, I was, I was born in the church. Uh, no, that doesn't save you. And, and a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm an American. Doesn't that make me a Christian? I wish. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. You must born again. be born again. And when you are born again, you don't have to ask anybody, did I just get born again? You know it. I said, you know it. You know it. And if you might say, well, I, I don't know it. Well, that's why we're going to pray for you right now. Yes, Are you ready? Yes. Everybody lift up a hand, say it out loud. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, I believe in your son Jesus, that you sent him. And he died on the cross. And he paid the full price for all my sins. All my, all my failures, all my, failures, all my, mistakes. All my mistakes, and I do believe, I do believe you, have you have raised him from the dead, and he is alive, and he is alive. Right, now. right now, King of Kings, King of Kings. Lord, of Lords. Lord of Lords, soon to come again, soon to come again. Jesus, Jesus, I confess you, I confess you Lord, of life, Lord of my life. I receive forgiveness. I receive, forgiveness. I receive, cleansing, I receive cleansing and washing. And washing. I, receive I receive eternal life. Eternal life. Thank, you Thank you for saving me. For saving me. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you did that, for the first time, you know something amazing has happened in you. Uh, contact the ministry and tell other people. And you got to get in a good church so you can be fed and grow. Now you are part of God's forever family. Amen. Oh, somebody say, I'm saved. I'm, I'm saved. saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. That's what the scripture said. If you'll do what we just did, if you believe it in your heart, confess with your mouth, you'll be safe. That's what the Bible said. And that's exactly how it is. He said, uh, um, these people were waiting as we read, and the angel went down and troubled the water. So they're waiting, waiting. What has already been bought and paid for, you don't have to wait for just like what we just did. You don't, you don't have to wait on that. Uh, it's, it's re he's ready. I said, he's ready. Uh, I know after I received the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues 
And I realized this is something we should be doing from the Word I saw it. We should be praying, speaking in the Spirit on a regular basis, every day. And uh, I came across some Pentecostal folks that, uh, that I knew, and they asked me about it. And, and so they said, well, you believe you can just speak in tongues whenever you want to? Because they didn't believe that. They, they believed you had to get in kind of a spiritual ecstasy and get kind of caught up and elsewise you couldn't. So that's why people would speak in tongues, wouldn't speak again for years. Waiting. <laughs> right? Waiting for the special thing. And, uh, and I, I said, yeah, yeah. That's what the scripture says. And they said, mm, no, 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 no. Now you can't just turn the Holy Ghost on and off when you want to. And it just came right up out of my spirit. I said, well, he's never off. <laughs> I, I didn't think that up. It just came right up out of my spirit. I said, he's never off. He's always on. Didn't the scripture say the Lord never sleeps? Yes. He never slumbers. He's always on. What does that mean? Anytime you will step out to receive utterance and express it, he's right there. He's always ready. He's always in you. He's always on. And so whenever you yield to him, utterance will come. He's never off. And you're not waiting on him. We're not waiting on him to receive what the Lord's already bought and paid for. But they were waiting for the moving of the water because this angel went down and troubled the water. Now here we see the ministry of angels. And this is an intriguing, interesting, amazing thing. That there are these uh, created beings of God called angels. They're messengers. And that they are involved in his work with us, and to us, and with us. Look in Hebrews, if you would, the first chapter. The, these first couple of chapters in Hebrews deal a lot with the subject of angels. I mean, there's numerous references to angels. And like I said, throughout the scriptures, there's hundreds of references to angels. Hundreds. It's not a, a, a rare, unusual thing for angels to be involved in God's dealings and, and his people's dealings. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 4 talks about the Lord being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, You are my son, this day have I begotten you, and again I'll be to him a father, and he'll be to me a son. So angels are not sons of God, like the Master is, and like we are. They're in a different category. Again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And you'll find in other references, like in Galatians and other places, we're told, in Revelation, we're told not to worship angels. And why would you need to be told that? Because there have been occasions where people saw angels and they are so glorious and they are speaking the words that God sent them to speak that it would pull on you to fall down. And uh, John, uh, in the book of Revelation, John, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus, he started to do that when this mighty angel that had told him some things from God, the glory, I guess, was so great and experience so amazing, he started to fall down and worship him. And the angel said, no, don't do it. See that you don't do it. He said, I am of, you know, your servant and the servants of the prophets. Worship God. Everybody say it out loud. Don't worship angels. Don't worship angels. And I'd, I'd say this too, don't pray to angels. Don't pray to angels. Don't worship angels. This is wrong. And you'll find some groups wind up talking more about angels than they do Jesus. This is a mistake. This is error. And yet, we don't need to uh, never talk about them. <laughs> we need to be aware. He goes on to say here, of his angels, he makes his angels spirits. 
and his ministers a flame of fire. So God, the Father, is a being of fire. This is, we don't know much about this, but the prophet that saw him on one occasion said from his loins up he was fire and his loins down he was fire. Um, a being of fire. The, the Holy Spirit has manifested as fire, among other things. And in the book of Revelation, when one saw Jesus, John saw, said his, his, his eyes were like a flame of fire. Um, script, scripture said that he'd baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. So there is a spiritual fire that natural fire portrays. And if you remember the, uh, when uh, Moses uh, spoke to God, God spoke to him out of that burning bush. Well, the scripture actually says that was an angel. The angel of his presence was the fire that burned that didn't consume the bush. So this is a fire that burns but doesn't destroy. Doesn't destroy anything good. And so his ministers, his angels are spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. Verse 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? The answer is none of them, only the master, Jesus. Um, you know, the scripture says in the future, we shall judge angels. So sometimes people say, you know, if somebody died, or especially if they went to uh, heaven young, well, God needed another angel in the choir. No, mm -mm, no, that'd be a demotion. We're in a different class. We're in a different, uh, a different category, different being. And we don't look it right now because right now we look pretty feeble and weak and ignorant <laughs> compared to these mighty, glorious beings. But give us some time. Is that right? Give us a few centuries. Give us a few millennia, right? And you'll see. It does not yet appear, but it, it'll be seen. And it goes on to say about these angels, are they not all ministering spirits? Who? The angels. Are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Well, that's us, right? And notice the word minister for. And it's also true that they can on occasion minister to us, but this is a different word. They, they minister to us and they minister for us. And they are involved in our protection, they're involved in our provision, they're involved in our deliverance, they're involved in healing, they're involved in the healing ministry. I want you to notice something um, the scripture talks about, his angels excelling in strength, and they minister that strength. In Mark 1, you don't have to turn there, but I'll just read it to you. Mark 1 and 13, Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days, it says, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. It seems especially at the end of that time, they came and ministered to him. And, um, you know, there was one occasion where angels came to the prophet Elijah and uh, he was running from Jezebel and had, hadn't eaten and was very fatigued and tired and, and just wanted to give up and die. And um, the angel woke him up and had prepared him a meal. <laughs> Have you read that? It's worth you reading. And it encouraged him to eat. And so he, eat, he ate and then went back to sleep. And the angel woke him up again and said, you need to eat again because it's a long journey and you need the strength and fed him again. And the scripture said he went in the strength of that food 40 days. So that's some 
That's a superfood. <laughs> right? I'd call that a superfood. <laughs> and the Bible said that uh, when manna fell down out of heaven, hey, we've got to remember this. Where did that come from? It didn't originate from the surface. And the scripture called it angel's food. It said man did eat angel's food. So that lets you know angels eat. They got food. And uh, we see that, the, I, I know it's no uh, accident that he went in the strength of that food 40 days. Jesus, after 40 days, he's hungry and angels show up. It didn't say so, but I expect they had food <laughs> that, would, that, that replenished him from that 40 day and night ordeal. And it says they ministered to him. The angels ministered to him. So they ministered both for us and to us. And you know, it happened again in Luke 22. Luke 22, when Jesus was in an agony praying in the garden, uh, knowing what he was facing in a few moments, hours, time, and Praying, Father, verse 42, Luke twenty two forty two. if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And there appeared an angel to him from heaven, strengthening him. Did you hear that term? There appeared an angel to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. He and his body was under great duress and stress, and when he needed it, an angel showed up right beside him. And I, from other scripture, I suppose he touched him. The angel touched him, and it strengthened him. Strengthened him. Uh, these things shouldn't be thought, you know, unreal to us. We have numerous instances of these kind of things happening. In Daniel, the 10th chapter, I'll just read it to you. Daniel 10, an angel appeared to him. And the experience was so profound and so powerful that he said, uh, Daniel 10, 15, he put his face to the ground and became dumb. Daniel did. He, he just kind of collapsed on the ground and couldn't speak. One like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. So this is an angel. He's not of the sons of men, but he looked like one. And that's why the scripture says, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Unawares. Well, they must look a whole lot like human beings, right? Or you'd know it. At least some of them do. <laughs> Others have wings. Well, that's, that's uncommon. <laughs> Behold, he, he, one appeared and touched his lips. And then he opened his mouth. Can you see that? He couldn't talk. And the angel touched his lips, and now he could talk. And so he spoke and said, O Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me. I have retained no strength. Now, notice how this ties into our healing account. It uses the word uh, impotent, and the Greek word for that is no strength. That's literally what it means. And so you've got five colonnades of people who are weak. Their legs are weak, their heart's weak, their arms are weak, their back's weak. Something is so weak they're not able to stand, function normally, whatever. And here... We got a, an angel, a messenger of the Lord, a messenger from heaven, ever so often shows up with a package of strength. <laughs> shows up. Now, now, we're laughing, but spiritual things are real. And spiritual things have shape and form that we wouldn't expect. But he had something that he brought with him to the pool. Right? 
and the first one that got in, they got it. How did they get it? Did he put it on them? Did he touch them with it? Something caused uh, paralyzed people to be able to walk. Something caused people in the last stages of, of cancer to be instantly healed. Something, something, something real, something tangible. And it was de- brought and delivered by an angel. Angels are involved in the healing ministry of the Lord Jesus. I heard an amazing testimony uh, some years ago. A man who loved God and was in, in, in the ministry. And uh, he had been limited, though, by his heart. He was born with a heart defect. And so he was limited. He'd start to do things and just get too weak. Couldn't do it. Couldn't travel. Couldn't do some things. But he had been finding out about healing. And, and he had been uh, reaching out for those things. And he said one night, in the middle of the night, he was startled. And he woke up. And a man was over him, standing over him. And then he realized the man had his hands in his chest, inside his chest. And he said, of course, he was quite alarmed. (laughs) And he said, the man looked like a man. Well, it wasn't a man. It was an angel. Said the, the, the man said, shh, be quiet. Go back to sleep. And he said, Against all reason, he went back to sleep. (laughs) And he said when he woke up in the morning, not one heart symptom. Oh, hallelujah. And not even a scar from the procedure. (laughs) Oh, God can do some stuff. Oh, hallelujah. And you can say, well, I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, he knew. He's like that man. I was blind and now I can see. He had a heart defect. Now he doesn't have it anymore. He was limited. Now he's not. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will we accept and receive the ministry of angels? Hmm? Amen. Say it out loud. Lord, Lord, teach us more more about this amazing ministry ministry. of your ministering spirits, Your 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 angels, and what we need to do to fully cooperate cooperate with you you and with them them. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Our time's up again. Say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.